Hey everyone, uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to make a jig that isn't exactly new. It's um, a rabbit, uh, rabbit and a bucktail jig, but it's going to be a big body jig. And you'll see when we tie in what I mean. Um, in the vise we got a 1 8 ounce mushroom worm nose style jig with um, a one aught sickle hook uh, in and I, I really like that style of hook. Since our water is froze, this jig is going to be intended for the spring. And um, I like using the bigger body as um, I'm looking more to represent craws than I am uh, minnows at that time. So we're going to start here by getting a little uh, brush on super glue and just hitting a little bit there on um, the collar and the, uh, the hook. Not the whole hook, just a little bit past the collar, that's it. I'm going to start making some wraps with our black 210 uh, flat wax nylon thread. We're going to run it all the way down to the point of the hook and trim the excess off. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put our rabbit tail on here. And I've already cut it to length. And what I want is about one and a quarter times, or say two inches, inch and a half to two inches past. And I'm going to run my thread back up just to the base of that collar, and that's where I'm going to start tying this rabbit uh, tail in. And you can, if if you feel that. Uh, the tail may be too long, you can shorten it up, or you can even make it longer. Um, it's personal preference. This is how I've always done it. So that's pretty good. We're strapped in there real well. Now, I'm going to take some black crystal flash. Yeah, um, I've had uh, somebody ask me exactly what good does black flash do? Well, um, I have a lot of confidence that it helps. Uh, I've experienced fishing uh, jigs with and without it, and there, there, I had a few days where the black flash made a lot of difference on a dark jig, so uh, it gives me a little more confidence, so I use it. And I'm going to cut uh, one long strand here and have to have two, and I'm going to tie two in on each side. And I tie them in as one uh, to keep it real strong so you can't pull out. And I'll run the, um, the flash I run right to the edge of that leather there on a, on a rabbit. I can add more flash, but I'm not going to. That's just enough. Now once we have our flash tied in, this is what I'm going to use. It's called uh, Long Shuck by Jay Fair. Um, it's a chenille, uh, type of chenille. And how I start this is I take the end and I'm going to pull all them filaments off so that I get that little piece of thread right there that's what I'm gonna tie in and I'm gonna tie it in right at the end of that thread there where we have the the rabbit secured and I'm gonna run my thread all the way up here to the base of the collar again and I'm gonna wrap this what this does is it creates the larger body, which that's what we're going to do, is it's it's a big body jig. Um, you can use this to put scent on, or just like I, I use it, it's more of a profile thing uh, of what it does to the the bucktail, and you'll see when we get it finished. As you're wrapping this, uh, pull back the fibers. And keep working it. 
I could use my bob and cradle, but I'm, I'm doing it as if you use a regular double A vise. Not everybody has a rotary vise for tying jigs. And we wrap. And as we wrap, we uh, pull the fibers back keep them all pointing down. This is going to create the, the big body effect. Now I'm going to run my thread up here onto the collar just below the head. We're not going to go that high with it. But we're going to go right up onto this lead collar. And that looks pretty good. And we're going to tie it off there. The one thing with this material is because it's so bushy, you have to be careful that you don't cut your thread as you're tying it off. I think we could actually... To be honest with you, I think we could use another wrap or two. Sorry about that. I didn't realize till I started uh, tying it that it had. I when I pulled the fibers down, I was down further on that other side. It didn't. It didn't look that way at first. Now we're good. Now we're gonna tie this off. And you're going to want to be tied off at the base of the lead collar and then trim your long shuck material. Now I, what I do is I pull all these fibers back and then I wrap them down, the ones that I can't get back, to expose the collar where I want to tie the bucktail in. You see now we have that little area right in here that we can tie the bucktail in. Now I'm going to take some black bucktail and I want to tie this in so it extends just beyond right to the bend of the hook. Um, not much further than that. See where we're at? And we'll trim it up. I know some people like to take bucktail and uh, they'll tie it in and then trim it. I'd rather trim it first. It's neater that way. Now, once you get a couple wraps, you're going to want to spread it out. And you're not going to want to make this bucktail real heavy. You're just going to want it there uh, I wouldn't say sparse, real sparse, but uh, I don't want it real heavy either because it's going to fold back in the water and you want to see it go back, but it, it, you also want it to have some body to it without uh, obscuring the big body underneath. Now we got some of it tied in. You're going to measure off of that. Trim again. And tie it on the front side. Usually what I do is I try to tie on the back and the front or the top and the bottom, I should say, of the jig first. And by doing that, 
uh, I actually save bucktail rather than trying to do the sides and fill it in. It's uh, it's just more efficient. But again, when you get used to tying, you'll find a way that works for you. It's easier. Uh, it's a lot of trial and error. Now I got that. Now I have just a small amount on each side that I got to fill in. And again, I don't want this real heavy because I don't want to obscure that body. And that body's also going to serve another purpose. It's going to be where I apply scent to it. Um, you can't, you don't really want to apply scent to a hair jig. Um, when you do, it ruins the action. It, um, water based ones will eventually wash off, but there's a lot of oil based scents out there that, um, you'll ruin the hair. So, Now you're going to want to measure off what you have tied in. Again, a lot of this is repetition. But I think it's worth it. Um, now these work for large mouth as well as small mouth. But I find when it comes to small mouth that uh, you really can't beat these type of jigs in cold water. There are times where this is just going to really be your best option. That side's done. Take a little bit of here. Measure it up. Now with a mushroom head jig, which I forgot to tell you is, is you gotta have to you gotta allow a little extra uh, from your measurement just because uh, the collar is gonna go underneath the head. So give yourself a little extra and never ever trim the tips of the bucktail. I'd rather leave a jig long if I made it a little too long because that's where all the action is. That's the wispy part of the hair that's buoyant and it, it's going to have all the action. You cut it off, there it, it just isn't as good. Now we got everything there. We're going to secure it all and make it nice and neat. Pull the loose hairs out. Get our collar tight and secure that the hair doesn't pull out. Looking pretty good. This is a really, really good jig. Um, it does good in the rocks. Uh, it has almost a stand-up presentation to it, which is when I want to imitate craws, this is the type of head I use. Most hair jigs, you know, you can imitate whatever, uh, whether it's minnow or crawfish or helgramite or whatever. Um, but certain heads work better for certain things. And, and this does a really good job of your bottom jigs, of, of mimicking your craws and your helgramites. Whip finish it up here to finish it. Tie it up, trim, a little bit of head cement, or in our case here, Sally Hansen's hard as nails. Um, works good, thin, penetrates the threads. I've never had it fail yet. I do use some regular head cement along with super glue also for certain things. Um, silicone I like using super glue. And we 
we go. And that is it. That is our big body jig. You can see it in there how it how it looks uh, with the body, and it's not really tied that heavy. It just looks that way, but it does a beautiful job of uh, mimicking a crayfish or helgramite, whatever is bouncing along the bottom. I'll show it to you in my hand as it sits. What fish ain't going to want to eat that? Well, thanks for watching, and uh, give it a try and let me know what you think. Thanks a lot.